Hi guys and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if this is your first time watching. My name is Katie and in today's video I am doing an update on my IKEA greenhouse cabinet. Um, you guys really liked the first video and I wanted to give it plenty of time um, to do an update video on it just because I didn't want to like do one right away and not really have anything changed but it's been a few months since I made that video my cat is just down here but if you guys haven't seen that I would recommend going and checking that one out first um, in this video I'm just going to be giving you guys an update on how I'm liking it what I've changed um, little things I've learned along the way and I'll also be giving you guys the tour at the end like I did in my last video um, but you'll probably see bits and pieces throughout this video anyway so I guess I'll just get started um, I don't want to make this video very long okay so first I want to talk about air circulation so in my first video when I spoke about air circulation I had mentioned that I don't have any fans in my cabinet um, and I open it once every like few days or something for uh, fresh air and looking back on that um, totally wrong shouldn't be doing that if you guys have one of these cabinets I would totally highly highly recommend having fans I have two in here right now they actually come in a pack of two on Amazon they're computer fans they're super quiet can run 24 7 have three speeds they're really great little fans I'll have them linked for you guys in my Amazon storefront along with everything else but I have them in my cabinet and they run 24 7 so yeah my fans run 24 7 um, the highest speed and I haven't had any problem with that so far and then every single morning I open my cabinet for about 30 minutes um, someone recommended that on the Facebook IKEA greenhouse cabinet page which I will actually link that in the description I don't remember if I had that linked last time but that's a really great page to get lots of um, like tips and tricks on so yeah anyway um, I keep my fans on 24 7 and I open my cabinet up half an hour every single morning for fresh air because plants need fresh air otherwise they're going to have issues they're gonna grow mold or they're gonna have some sort of like bacteria or fungal issues or whatever luckily I haven't had that yet I don't think in my cabinet I was pretty lucky at the start but I also didn't have many plants in there and I hadn't sealed it which I'll get into later um so the airflow wasn't too bad but yeah even if you don't have fans at least open it once a day it'll do your plants a world of good okay so the next thing I want to quickly touch on um because it's the thing I get asked the most questions about is lighting so in the first video I mentioned that I use the Barina t5 lighting on Amazon and a lot of you guys have been buying them and loving them um, but I get a lot of questions on what color I use because I have both colors on my storefront and I use the yellow ones because they have more of like a warmy they're kind of a little bit warm but they're not too warm so they're not they don't come off yellow at all I, I don't think um, but the white ones I've been told from others have a bit of a purpley hue to them So if you are going to buy the white ones know that they do have a bit of purple to them But I'm pretty sure they're both the same um, I haven't seen anywhere where anyone's saying that one's better than the other I think it's really just personal preference and what light you think will look better in your space but yeah I haven't really changed anything with my lighting um, I have exactly the same lights going um, I I think I might have just changed around where they are on the levels and stuff but other than that um, lighting is pretty much exactly the same and the next thing I want to touch on is the shelving um, if you have noticed which I'm sure you have already um, I have changed all my shelving well two shelves to wire shelves and I bought these from the container store um, I will leave them linked in the description actually only just added these in recently like within the last few days because I had one glass shelf in there for quite a while and I've been seeing so many people do the wire shelves and I just think it's such a nice like sleek idea um, considering it's like a plant greenhouse like you don't really want plants on glass shelves at least I don't anyway it's again personal preference but this way you're able to get airflow through the entire cabinet and not just the individual layers of the cabinet so for instance um before I had one glass shelf in the middle kind of um and one fed at the top one fed at the bottom and I'm, I know both levels, the humidity and stuff did vary, like it wasn't the same all the time. But now that I have the wire shelves in, the whole cabinet is kind of just like one big greenhouse, if you know what I mean. Whereas before I felt like it was the separate levels 
uh, that I had to like keep up with and stuff. But there is also different shelves you can buy. So I got the container store ones, um, they're from Alpha, but you can also go on to Amazon and buy Rubbermaid shelves, which I will also have linked in my storefront if you're interested in those. I personally went for the container store shelves just because I think they look a little bit nicer, a little bit more sleek, but also keep in mind something I have to buy with the shelves um, to install them. Uh, I actually got it from Lowe's, which is little corner brackets, um, two inch corner brackets to put on each corner and the shelf kind of just like fits in perfectly. It just depends what shelf you have, but yeah, if you're buying the Alpha container store, you just need the four brackets and the shelf, you can kind of just squeeze it into place and it's pretty stable i didn't have to zip tie it down or anything and then as you can see i zip tied the lights to it and stuff and yeah so far so good so yeah once again i will leave everything linked down in the description and if you don't see a certain product i spoke about um it will be in my amazon storefront which will also be linked down there um, i get a lot of questions about the products i use and stuff and i just want to make sure you guys know exactly where you can access them and where you can find all the links and stuff because um, they're all right down in the description. So moving on, last thing I wanted to touch on, at least for now, um, is the seal. So I actually went ahead and sealed most of my cabinet, I'd say 90, 85, 90% of my cabinet up, um, all the front areas. So you will be able to see I left little areas up the top um, on the sides and stuff where airflow can still get in. Okay, I forgot what it's called, but I found a little bit of extra. It's like a little foam thing with the little like peel off thing that you can like stick to the side so it's kind of like a certain amount of thickness um and i just put that all around the edges um between the doors pretty much anywhere where i wanted to seal and then you have to be careful to leave certain areas um like where the door closes you have to leave a little bit of space there so the door can still close um i think there might be a little spot up the top too but yeah just when you're if you're going to seal your cabinet um when you're sealing it make sure you're skipping any little bits that you think need to be there for the cabinet to be able to close and open and whatnot and since i've sealed my cabinet um i didn't realize that much of a humidity jump right now my cabinet usually is always uh, above 60. i try to keep it always above 60 percent um right now it's sitting at 67 which is pretty good in my eyes um i don't keep the humidity too high because i don't want to keep a humidifier in there i find with a humidifier if i were to keep one in there that it would just make everything wet in there and i don't really want that um i think the humidity that the plants put in there and generate in there is fine uh, i don't really think i need to add anything else if i was going to add anything maybe a small little fountain or something in the middle i think that would be really really cute but i'd have to find a really cool one to put in there um, but I have seen people do that and it works, it adds humidity. But for now, I'm happy with where it is. Um, I don't see myself needing to add a humidifier in there, at least anytime soon. And something I also wanted to mention, or someone I wanted to mention, is Joanna. Um, she has a full-on guide all about this specific Millsboro cabinet. Um, but she made that a little while ago. I followed a lot of her guide for my fans and also the wire shelving at the back, which I forgot to mention. Um, that's something I bought not too long after I did the first video. Um, and I just have that wire shelving at the back. They're just zip tied onto like the little cabinet screws that it comes with. Um, but yeah, those wire grids are also linked in my Amazon if you want to check them out. But yeah, Joanna has like a big guide all about um, the Millsboro greenhouse cabinet. Um, I got a lot of my information off her, so I would tag her down in the description i'll also leave the link to her guide for those of you who are interested and then quickly i want to shout out again um ikea greenhouse cabinet on instagram because they gave me a lot of inspiration just to start this cabinet okay so i'm going to quickly give you guys a little bit of a tour of the cabinet i know you've probably already seen like all of it and everything in there but i'm going to go through and tell you guys about the plants i have in there and so if you guys don't want to watch that then feel free to leave but if not stick around and let's quickly get into this tour welcome to the cabinet tour <laughs> so here is the cabinet top to bottom and opening it up so the top shelf i have a bunch of mainly rehab um aroids and mainly philodendron i think they're pretty much all philodendron except for maybe a couple um second layer i have more propagations and just a couple other things sitting in there and the bottom layer i have more propagation type things um a bunch of syngoniums some hoya 
um, Monstera, some other stuff. Um, but I'm going to go through the plants first from top to bottom. So, back corner, we have a Philodendron Brantianum. This is one I propagated just recently. Um, and I'll quickly show you the mother plant that is here in this corner. You can see where I took the cutting right here. And it's put out one, almost two leaves since. Um, we have a, this guy is a Philodendron Vericosum. Um, this guy went through thrips just recently. It has a little bit of damage. The new leaves are all funny because I sprayed it down with high pressure water. Um, but this guy was quarantined for quite a while and all healthy now, but yeah, it's looking a little funky, but made sure he's fully thrips free and he's back in the cabinet <laughs> after being out for quite a while. Uh, this is a philodendron silver sword, a little baby that I got a while ago that's grown a couple of leaves. Um, philodendron Belmox Fantasy in the back, putting out a nice new leaf back there. Uh, this is a philodendron Splendid or Varicosum cross melanocrysum. This one got overwatered a bit, so it has some little overwatering spots, but the new leaf that's coming in looks great. So hopefully, hopefully I have combat that now. Um, this is a Epipremnum pinnatum variegatum, variegatum, variegated elbow. Honestly, I don't know. This guy was kind of like an impulse buy off a purge. It was kind of cheap and I just snagged it. Anyway, um, we have a Philodendron gloriosum in the back, which isn't in the best shape. Unfortunately, I don't really know what's going on with that. Um, just ignore that. Um, up here, also ignore. <laughs> There's a bunch of overwatering marks. Um, I on honestly first thought that was thrips or some sort of pest or something else, but I don't know. It was exactly the same as what this leaf is doing, and I figured out that was overwatering after just underwatering it for a while. And this has kind of done the same. The new leaf doesn't have any marks, um, but this did get stuck when it was coming out. Like I said, a bunch of recaps. Um, and this is my Philodendron gigas. has two nice leaves on it. And this big leaf is a little bit beat up. Um, it was like that when I got it, but this guy is in spag moss and I don't know, he's doing okay, but I'm just, he's just, just don't even think about him. But yeah, this is mainly, <laughs> mainly rehabs up here, but yeah, a lot of my aroids. And then down here, second layer, we have a Alocasia Frydeck. Um, this one was actually a bulk a while ago. And has now got four leaves this one only got recently put in here this is a melanocrysum node um that has a really long root that the whole plant well it wasn't really a whole plant i'm not even gonna go into it but yeah <laughs> whole plant kind of died and that was what was left so uh this is a begonia maculata cutting that i just did recently this is a uh a philodendron pink princess one of my most recent plants um, I have two Syngonium pink splash back there, ones I just recently propagated. And a couple little cuttings in here, a little sad Melanocrysum that is actually growing roots. Um, what is this? Monstera semiana variegated, which is also not growing roots, but it's growing a weird shoot. Um, and then this is a Philodendron cam, I'm not even going to try to pronounce it, Philodendron campo, I'm going to call it. Um, yeah, that guy's been in there for a long time, hasn't done anything. Anyway, last but not least, the bottom shelf. So back here we have a Hoya Australis Lisa. It's growing pretty long. This one's been in here for quite a long time. Um, it's pretty happy. We have this Variegata Syngonium, um, Albo Syngonium. Little baby pink splash. Another little baby pink splash that actually got potted up and put in here yesterday. Um, a kind of a sad Monstera Peru back there. I think it got a little bit sunburnt because I had it like up here right up next to the lights um so it's been moved down um a hoya macrophylla this might have been in here in the first uh video i did but i cannot remember um a little baby melanocrysum that's putting out its first little leaf after cutting it um and then last but not least this last but not leaf did i really just say that oh my gosh last but not least is this raffidophora decursiva i love this guy but the most recent leaf it put out doesn't have a split and I'm kind of sad about it. But this leaf is so pretty. Anyway, so that is pretty much all of the plants in my cabinet. Um, a lot of rehabs, a lot of ugly looking ones up here, but I love it. 
So yeah. You can also tell the humidity's dropped a bunch since I opened the door. Okay, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and maybe picked up a thing or two um, from this one and maybe even the first video. Um, and if you have done one of these cabinets, maybe inspired from one of my videos, I'd love to see photos of them. So if you want to send me photos on Instagram, link is in the description as usual. Um, I would love to see them because that kind of stuff makes me so happy. But yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and I will hopefully see you in my next one. Bye guys.